Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Wednesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met, aka it's an a win is a win is a win is a win edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I say that all the time, and last night absolutely was no exception to that one. Uh, it was a seesaw game, it was an agita inducing game, it was a grab the roll aids inducing game, it was a take a couple of years off your life inducing game, but a win is a win is a win is a win is a win, and I'm going to talk about last night's game on today's show. As, uh, as was stated before the game by Pete Alonzo, actually I think it was um, either earlier in the day or even perhaps uh, Monday night after the Monday night uh, game, uh, Pete Alonzo was quoted as saying, uh, Tuesday's game is an absolute must win for us. We have to win tomorrow night, uh, you know, last night. And, uh, you know, Pete Alonso is a rookie. This is his first season. He's 30 games deep into his major league career, 34 games, 35 games deep into his major league career. Um, and he's taking the, the reins and sort of saying, hey, guys, let's go. We need to win. Hop on the back and I'm going to carry you. And boy, did he ever deliver on that sort of rallying cry um, in last night's game. I mean, Alonzo absolutely was the star of the game. Went three for five on the night. He drove in four runs. He scored two. And the, he, he hit an absolute monster moonshot home run that was as clutch as clutch could be. After uh, after going up early 2 nothing in the first inning, um, Noah Syndergaard gave up the lead, um, ended up tying, uh, allowing the game to be tied, and then subsequently allowed the go-ahead runs to score um, after he exited, uh, or before he exited, rather, after six innings pitched. I'll talk more about Noah in just a moment, but <clears throat> back to the uh, Alonzo thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, he, he, he is everything he was advertised to be. Uh, he's dealt with the adversity of his first little mini slump um, really well. And he, you know, he just busted out last night. And he did what a thumper in the middle of the lineup is supposed to be able to do. And he put the team on his back and he carried them to a victory last night. And he wasn't alone. Robbie Cano had a real nice night at the plate. Um, Jeff McNeil, of course, was on base. Two runs scored himself. Um, the pitching was uh, up and down. And again, I'll talk about that in a minute. But... Uh, just, I can't say enough about how impressed I am with Pete Alonzo, with the way that he's handled everything so far this season, uh, the, the, the way that he very maturely responded to the high school tactics, antics, nonsense, immature baby bullshit from, from Chris Paddock uh, Monday night. Um, the way that he just, yeah, whatever, he got me last night, or he got me. That's fine. Uh, that's what a pro is supposed to do. And the, a pro is not supposed to sulk around the mound and breathe fire out his nose and laser beam focus on another player, make it about me versus you. And that's not what a professional baseball player does. It's about the team. And Pete Alonso put the team first last night, and he brought the Mets a victory. So uh, as game balls go, Pete Alonso's earned his 13th game ball of the season. Let that sink in here. So last night, the Mets won their 17th game of the season. And I don't just award game balls when the Mets win. I give out game balls even in a losing effort. So it's possible, and I didn't look at it real closely, it's possible that Alonzo might have earned a game ball in a loss. Um, but regardless, he's got 13 game balls. That means he was the most valuable player, or a most valuable player, in a third of the games, more than a third of the games that the Mets have played this season. Now imagine if the Mets had followed the advice of Andy Martino and others. I'm not just uh, singling out Andy Martino, but a lot of people were very opposed to having Alonzo start the season with the big club, you know, for uh, service time manipulation reasons. And um, you know, those are 15 games that who knows what the what the outcome of those 15 games might might be. So I love the fact that he started the season with the Mets, and I love the fact that he's on the short season, the clear MVP of the team. Um, also last night, I want to talk about pitching, and I, I mentioned Syndergaard before. Uh, after Syndergaard seemingly turned a corner last week, pitching a, a, a complete game shutout, 
driving in the sole run of the game for the Mets with a home run. Um, you might have thought, and I cer certainly did, you know, boy, maybe he's figured something out. Maybe because the weather was a little bit warmer, he was able to get a better grip on the ball. Um, he mixed his pitches better. He changed speeds better. Um, last night, it seemed like all that was out the window, and he was back to being hittable Noah. And that's not that's not good. And uh, it's 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 unexpected because I felt like like Syndergaard was smarter than that, and he's really regressing into being a thrower more than a pitcher and I, I just think he's better than that he's more than that um last night he was not he was he was very human he was very hittable uh at one point um I, with my my text group we were texting and I don't remember who it was but I think it might have been Mike who said uh, he looks afraid either Mike or Jeff one of the Cohen boys uh, said he looks afraid, and I, I'm like, he, he, you're right, he does. He looks terrified. He, the, the one, uh, the one long fly ball that was hit, uh, maybe it was Machado that hit it, and Conforto made that brilliant play in right field. Um, I think Syndergaard was on the mound at that point, but I just remember looking at his face, and he was just like, gee, oof, got lucky there. But that's just not Syndergaard. He, he's, he's, I don't know, man. He's better than that. And he, he wasn't better last night. He was very hit, very hittable. He did manage to go six innings. His pitch count was relatively low. Um, but nine hits in six innings, only five strikeouts. It's just not what we expect from Noah Syndergaard. And the, the lopsided nature of the hits slash walks to innings pitch uh, really ruins the whip for him. And, you know, the whip is becoming really important as a metric to, to judge pitchers' uh, performances. And Syndergaard's whip is really, really high. And if you listen to the Shea Anything podcast this week, um, Nelson Figueroa was on with Andy Martino instead of um, Doug Williams this week. And Figueroa was really good. I actually really, really, really enjoyed listening to Figueroa talk about um, the philosophy of pitching and uh, some, of the, some of the more intricate details of it. But the one thing he did say that stood out to me was Martino put him on the spot and he said, who's going to have the better next five years? Is it going to be Syndergaard or Wheeler? And... Um, Figgy paused for a little bit before he answered, but it wasn't long before he said, it's going to be Wheeler. And, I, you know, I think he's right. Wheeler seems to be pitching, not throwing, and Syndergaard seems to be throwing and not pitching. Can that change? Sure. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. So let's keep going with the game. Syndergaard comes out. Seth Lugo, another early season MVP, comes into a 5-2 uh, a to two game at the, that point. Um, the Padres are winning 5-2. to two. Um Lugo comes in and throws not one, but two shutdown innings. Two fantastic shutdown innings. You know, I, I earlier in the season, I was questioning whether Lugo was right. And then it came out, like, after he had two back-to-back, -back, uh, or back-to-back -back terrible outings in relief, I was sort of like, hey, is everything okay with, with Lugo? Because he doesn't look good, and doesn't look like himself, and whatever. Um, but uh, it turned out he was sick. And that was all that was wrong, because other than those two early season snafus, uh, Lugo has been absolutely brilliant out of the bullpen. And last night was no exception with two scoreless innings. Uh, and he looked dominant in doing so. He, he, he looked very opposite Noah Syndergaard. Um, hitters were off balance. Um, he had full control of all of his pitches. He used the strike zone effectively. He was just a great, it was just a great performance. And that bridged the gap long enough for the Mets to claw back into the game, um, to tie the game up, and then eventually take a lead on the aforementioned um, Pete Alonso two-run home run. Um, so the Mets ended up with a 7-5 to five lead, and then, of course, the, the gap, uh, the ball was handed to Edwin Diaz, our lockdown closer. And I tweeted about this last night um, after he... Uh, after he retired the leadoff uh, batter with a strikeout, uh, he immediately gave up a walk. And boy, the 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 walk. As soon as he gave up that walk, I'm just in my head. I'm like, lockdown closer, lockdown closer, lockdown closer. And <laughs> there's another voice in my head saying, Armando Benitez, Armando Benitez, Armando Benitez. And I'm I'm like biting whatever's left of my nails off as. Um, Ian Kinsler hits that little floater that barely escapes the infield for a, a bloop hit. And then uh, Panic City mode hits. And then the Armando Benitez 
voice in my head gets louder and louder and I envision myself sitting in a mental institution with a straitjacket on, sitting in a corner rocking, saying, lockdown closer, lockdown closer, lockdown closer. Meanwhile, Jared Kalanick is winning Rookie of the Year in a couple of years and Justin Dunn's turning out to be a, an ace on the pitching staff for the Mariners and we end up with a former lockdown closer and an aging Robbie Cano. Uh, and I just get that thought in my head and it freaks me out. Um, of course, uh, it, it wasn't over from there. Uh, it wasn't enough to threaten. The The Padres had to strike. They had to get a run. Um, and then walk the bases loaded. So it wasn't, wasn't even bad enough that they scored a run on a solid base hit. But then uh, with runners on first and third, I'm still thinking like, hey, there is an opportunity here for the Mets to get a double play and get out of this inning. Okay, good. And uh, that, of course, didn't happen. Uh, because, like, the second pitch after that... Diaz throws a uh, ball in the dirt, gets past Ramos, second and third. Machado's up to bat. Intentional walk brings up, who did I just tweet about the other day, the 2015 Royals? Brings up Eric freaking Hosmer, who strikes out looking, uh, not not once, but actually twice. He had uh, four strikes, which was wonderful. Um, <laughs> and then Hosmer gets all hot and whatever. And, and then finally Hunter Renfro grounds out to end the game. And of course he grounds out to Ahmed Rosario. So it wasn't even like it was an easy out to end the game. It was an absolute roller coaster ride of a game. I was exhausted by the end of it, but it was that point of exhaustion where I was so nervous and just on the edge of my seat, or in this case, on the edge of my, my bed, um, watching the game, uh, and I couldn't go to sleep. I don't think I got to sleep till about 3 a.m. last night after the adrenaline wore off. Um, but again, a win is 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 a win, and the Mets won. They'll have the chance to win again and take this series. This afternoon, the Mets play at 3.40 p.m. Eastern, uh, 12.40 start Pacific time. That's an odd time to start. Uh, after the game, they'll fly home, have an off day, and then they welcome in the Miami Marlins. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk much about it today, but from what I can tell, it looks like Jed Lowry is going to return uh, or make his season debut on Friday uh, when the Marlins are in town. Um, I did also want to talk a little bit about Todd Frazier, but I've already gone on for over 12 minutes, so that's going to be the end of it for today. I'll come back tomorrow, um, and when I recap tonight, uh, today's game, I'll throw in some thoughts about uh, Frazier, J.D. Davis, and Jed Lowry, um, but I'll do that tomorrow when I have a little bit more time. So uh, until then... Thanks for watching. Um, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.